everybody, welcome back to another Crypto Tax Girl video. My name is Joe Howe, I'm the head of operations here, and today I wanna to take you through something super quick, super easy, but I do think it's a, something that a lot of people um, overlook, especially when they're trying to do this on their own. So we're gonna take a look at the Crypto Tax Report section in Coin Tracking. So that's under this Tax Report drop down here, you just click Tax Report, and that is gonna pull you up to this page. So there's kind of a lot going on on this page, um, but there's just a few key things that you need to be worried about. So first, you've got your country. You know, if you're in the U.S., which most of the people that are viewing our videos or that we work with are from the U.S., so we're going to put United States here. Then we've got the method. Now, this is a big thing, you know, and, and I'm going to release a whole other video on all these different methods and, and what might be best for you. But for the sake of this you know, uh, video, I just wanna highlight, this is where you're gonna choose which method you're using. So are you using first in, first out? Are you using last in, first out? Something we've been using a lot lately is this Opti calculation um, type of specific identification method. So that's where you can choose this. Now, a really cool thing about coin tracking is you can click this multi option. So it's gonna pull up all the years and then you're going to choose for each year what tax method you used. So maybe for 2017 through 2022, you used FIFO, and then this year you want to switch to Opti. So it's going to pull all those past years in FIFO and you know stay in line with what you've pulled up until this year. And then you're going to be able to switch to Opti this year without disrupting any of those pools or anything that happened in those prior years. Super cool feature that coin tracking has. So I also, even if you're just pulling, you know, FIFO all the way through, I like to use this multi option just because when you go and actually generate a tax report, and I'll show you that in a sec, it'll pull all those years so you can see and make sure that the data you've been reporting in the past is still accurate in coin tracking and nothing's gotten messed up in the prior years. Then down here, we've got this tax calculation. We just keep it as calculate gain only, but you can mess around with some of this stuff and choose your, your short-term gain rate and stuff like that. And so that's something that's an option to you, but we just keep it as calculate gain only because um, we do those calculations on our own outside of this. So then we've got the year over here. And now we're going to consider all previous trades in the report. We're going to keep that on. Oops. Yeah, we're going to keep that on. Create an FBAR report. We don't need to keep that on. We don't need the FBAR report um, for the sake of what we're doing here. So you can turn that off. Now this depot separation button. So this basically says that, you know, if you've got coins on Gemini and you've got coins on Coinbase, it's gonna separate those two. So taxable transactions that happen on Coinbase happen on Coinbase. Taxable trans transactions that happen on Gemini happen on Gemini. It's not gonna mix the two at all. So this can be useful if you're trying to kind of separate a certain lot of coins. You know, maybe you want your your Gemini is your long-term holdings that you want to hold forever and you don't want those to be factored in, then you can utilize something like this. Then we've got the group by day. So this is something we do on and off with clients. It depends on what type of activity they're doing. If you are a day trader and you're constantly trading in and out of coins, you're most likely going to want to turn this off or leave this off. If you're someone that's just buying here and there and selling here and there and you're kind of just, you know, an average trader holding and doing various different things in the crypto realm, but you're not high frequency trader, um, grouping stuff by day is typically fine. When you, uh, when you do group stuff by day, there can be problems if you are that high frequency trader. Um, so I'm not gonna dive into the weeds there on that, but just know that if you are a high frequency trader, there can be problems that show up if you um, group by day. Then we've got fiat warnings and foreign fiat p &L. You can leave both of those off. Um, and then We've got the conversion rate. So we keep this on best prices. That basically says that whichever coin in the trade, if you're trading Ethereum for some 
new coin that just launched on Uniswap that doesn't have a price feed, it's going to take the price of Ethereum and to establish the cost basis of that new coin. So it's essentially going to take the best best coin is what they're referring to. So the most well-known highest market cap coin is where they're going to pull the data from for that specific trade. So we like to keep it on best prices. Um, then we've got some in coin, income stuff. So you can just leave all of that on. And then you're going to want to incorporate the third currency fees into the calculation. This happens if, you know, uh, a, a recent example that I can think of off the top of my head is sometimes in the Cosmo eco, Cosmos ecosystem, you can withdraw, you know, you could withdraw Juno and you'll have a fee in Osmo. And so that fee will get baked in or you'll have a trade of Juno to, you know, um, Adam and that there'll be a Osmo fee. So that's going to bake that third currency as they're referring to it, referring to it as into that trade. Um, so keep that on. And then the tax treatment for liquidity pool and mining transactions, you can keep this on. This depends on, you know, who you're working with. I I definitely highly recommend chatting with um, a tax professional, one that knows crypto about this option. If you're if you're um, not quite sure what to do there, um, you can treat the liquidity pool transactions as taxable events, or you can turn this off so that they're not taxable events. It really depends on what your stance is, or who you're working with, and what their stance on that whole. Um, that whole area is. I don't want to dive into that in this video um, because that could take <laughs> quite a while to discuss. But just so you know, you can have that on or off just depending on you know which which route you're going there. You just need to make sure that you know if you're keeping it off for 2020, you need to keep it off for 2021, 2022, 2023. You can't you know kind of just flip flop and change because that's going to alter numbers from prior years and pools and buckets and stuff like that. So um, just keep that keep that one way or the other when you are pulling reports. So that's really all the settings there. Um, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but I did want to just break down the main things that you need to be on the lookout for. So the last thing I want to show you here is just this, um, this multi-option. So I've got all these years in FIFO, right? And I can go ahead down here and I can pull that report. And then it'll let you expand here and you can see all the years. So I love this option because, you know, when we're pulling a client's accounts for 2023, we want to make sure that 2022, 2021, 2020, all those years are still where they're, they're still at where we reported at. Because sometimes coin tracking can import new data, stuff can get messed up. So we like to check to make sure that everything is the same, um, nothing got messed up, and that helps us know that what we're going to report here for 2023 is accurate and complete. So using that multi-option is super awesome. And then again, you know, if you wanted to, you know, do Opti for 2022 and 2023, it'll let you do that here. And it's not going to mess with the prior year buckets that it's pulled from. Um, so you can keep things accurate and complete there. So here again, you'll see FIFO, 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 FIFO. Then we get to 2022 and now we're pulling an Opti. And I can't remember. Yeah, so you'll see for this account, this demo account I have, you know, it went from a $9,600 loss to a $42,000 loss. So that is, um, that's also something to look into is which tax method you're using. And I'll make another video on that, breaking down these tax methods, just so you guys have a better understanding of those. But I just wanted to show you these, the tax report and everything you needed to know there. Um, as always, if you have any questions or need any help with this stuff, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Laura. Um, I will put the link to our website and our consultations in the description of this video. Have a good one.